period of time? Would you mind? No. I don't think I would. Especially after one of your short walks in the snow. <laughs> Are you tired? Oh, I'm exhausted. Oh, Dave. I don't suppose I ever will make a real New Englander out of you. Uh, be patient. You've only been at it three weeks. Three weeks, just three weeks. I've changed in that time, though. Not at all. You're just as lovely as ever. <laughs> no, no. No, I mean, I was dead. And you brought me back to life. Hey, what you said the other night. You do really love me. More than I thought I could love anyone. You wouldn't just say it. It isn't what you always say. It's never been said before. Never? Not by me. Pete, I'd die now if it wasn't true. Because except for you, there's no one. And I couldn't go back to being what I was before you came. I... I couldn't go back to that crazy... Don't talk about it. Yes, I must. You sure you want to tell me? Yes. There was someone, it was two years ago, I thought I, I was in love with him. But you mustn't mind because it wasn't anything like this. you believe that? Yes. It isn't easy to tell you this. You don't have to. Yes, I do. I became engaged to him. And after the engagement was announced, three months before we were to be married, when I was buying my truth, so it suddenly... There was another girl. You married her. Ellen, don't try to talk about it. It makes no difference. Yes, it does. It does because you don't know what it did to me. You don't now know. That's enough. Well, then, you, you, you've said it all now. There's nothing more to be said. Don't put on the light. Oh, Catherine, I, I, I want to tell you something. Catherine, Kate and I are going to be married. That wonderful deal. Oh, but not much of a surprise. What, you mean it showed? On both of you. Oh, Cat, I love him so. And I want to be a good wife to him. I want to make him very happy. And he mustn't ever be sorry that he married me. Well, I, I hope you don't say such ridiculous things to him. Have you set the date? Uh huh. Early next month. There isn't any reason for any longer. None. Cat, hmm? you like him, don't you? Like him? Of course. Why do you ask? You're always so quiet when he's around. It's almost as though you were avoiding him. Oh, well. Do you really expect everyone else to go on him and hang on his every word the way you do? <laughs> no, of course not. Then you do like him. I like him and approve him. Does that satisfy you? Now run along and get some sleep. All right. Oh, Cat, I wish you were as happy as I am. Someday. Perhaps I will be. Good night. Someday. Perhaps I will be. Someday. When there are two great raven rails in the world. One for Ellen Sexton and the other for... Kate? Kate, darling, where are you? In the kitchen. I thought you were writing. I can't work on an empty stomach. Well, you just had lunch an hour ago. Well, my stomach doesn't know it. Oh, Kate, Raven, will you just don't want to work? You're stalling. If I had my early afternoon shift... No, look, I, I have something to show you. Oh, I can wait. No, no, Kate, the cleaning woman here, she'll see it. Well, is there something indecent about a man kissing his wife? Oh, you're impossible. You come here. No, you can't hey, master me, hey, you fool. Hey, no fair kick. Oh, now, look. You've torn the newspaper right where it had our names in it. Our names? Yes, look, right here, see? Mr. and Mrs. Tate Ravenwell have returned to Chadhurst from their wedding trip. The young couple will remain in Chadhurst for a few weeks... And then spend three months in Mr. Ravenworth's native town of three slow corners, Carolina. 
During that time, Mr. Raven will try to be his book on the... Well, then it really goes on about the book. Think is that really a thing? Three crow corner. It is, yes. What sort of a place is it? Oh, there's a town and rice fields, a big swamp, a few truck farms. Do you think your family will like me? You think they could help us? I hope not. Say, how'd you like to come with me to New York tomorrow when I sign my teaching contract for next autumn? We can have dinner, see a show. Well, that sounds very extravagant, very beautiful. There's only one thing wrong with it. Tomorrow is the day of Aunt Abby's party, and I'm the guest of honor. Oh, no way out. Mm -mm, none. But look, Catherine's still visiting in New York. Why don't you treat her to that dinner and show? It would be so good for her. I don't like being good for people. Not even for cats? Not Kat? even for cats. Please, Tate. Please take her off. Now, look, sir, let me make my own date. Well, that's a fine thing. As though it were every wife who'd urge her husband to go out with somebody else. Darling, your medal will be here in a moment for valor in the face of the green-eyed monster. Hey, what's the matter? Nothing. Was it something I said? Apparently, I don't appreciate your kind of humor. What are you talking about? What right of you to say that I'm jealous of you? What right? Have I ever shown it, have I? Ellen. Even at the party Catherine gave when we first came home. Did I ever mention the way that stupid, listing Carter girl fawned all over you? And you let her? You enjoyed it? Did I ever say anything about the way you walked up and down the beach with that silly redhead when we were on our honeymoon? And have I ever mentioned the picture you have in your desk of that half-naked South Sea Island girl? Oh, I've seen it there, even if you do keep saying that island women meant nothing to you. That happens to be an illustration for the anthropological book, which, as you know, I happen to be writing. Aren't there any other pictures you can use? There are. There are about 500 other pictures. If you saw that one, you must have seen the rest of them. Is that all, uh, is that all you have to say? Are you quite finished? Hey, don't talk to me in that tone. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. I'm sorry. I am jealous. I am. I'm terribly jealous of you. But forgive me, Pete. I can't help it. I try not to be. I try so hard. But that's the way I am. And I'm in love with the way you are. No, don't say anything more. Just hold me. It's awful to quarrel with you. And to hear you talk so coldly. Because now I know what losing you would be left. And I couldn't stand it, Pete. I'd die. I'd die if I lost you. Well, Dr. Prescott, what's your verdict? Hey, this book of yours looks like a first rate piece of work. At least, as far as you're gone. Thank you, sir. I just wish it would move along a little faster. Oh, don't try to rush it, boy. Just let it grow. Well, yeah, so you and Ellen are off to your home tomorrow, huh? She'll enjoy the change, I expect. She's a bit nervous about it. And all young wives are nervous about meeting their husband's families. Be expected. Uh, everything all right with you and Ellen? Just fine. Ellen is a very complicated girl. Yes, I know that. Truthfully, there are times when I feel that her, her real self, the, the Ellen I'm in love with, is trapped somehow, caught up in some old fear. She's very jealous, you know. Yes. You have a difficult situation to conquer there, Tate. Try to remember that jealousy is an illness and that the cure is unknown. Try to be patient. Be understanding if you can. And the chances are that time will bring a cure. She had a trying experience some years ago. Broken engagement. It'll be all right, sir. I'm sure of it. Is uh, Catherine about? I'd better say goodbye to her. Well, she's in the garden, I think. It's a little early in the year for gardening, isn't it? No, not for Catherine. Well, sir, goodbye for a while. Goodbye, Tate. Let us hear from you. Catherine? Hello, then. Oh, hello. What are you working on? These islands. 
I never can get them the way I want them. Ah, uh, you're a perfectionist. With Iris, yes. Remind me of my brother Ned. Does he like Iris? Well, I'm not sure he likes them, but he raises them. <laughs> he also raises camellias and a dozen others. He wanted to be an artist, but he gave it up because he decided he wasn't good enough to be the best. So now he's a gardener. I can understand that. Can you? Say, will you please stop poking at that earth and get up here where a man can look at you? But I... This is the last time for three months you can rest your eyes on my angular face and you keep your head buried in the dirt. Am I going to have to lift you up? Hey. Come here. Here. That's better. Now look up at you. Catherine, what's the matter? Nothing the matter. You're not ill. Of course not. 